This is a 2024 Jeep Grand Wagoneer L. This is a base model. And I had a quick video I'd done a little bit ago about uh, my initial thoughts on this. And I just wanted to do a little bit longer one to discuss what I think of it and what this competition is. So this one is a base L, comes in at $97,640. So very expensive vehicle, lots of competition when you get into that kind of price range. And this is Jeep's first foray into an ultra luxury SUV. So that's another thing they've got going against them, in my opinion. There's competition that's been doing this for years. And these guys have not. It is a nice vehicle, though. Uh, the one thing that it has going for it is the highest horsepower out of all the vehicles that I compared it to. It's got 510 horsepower. It is an inline six twin turbo. Now that I think may have been a mistake in this application. I love inline sixes, but they don't behave like a V8 or a V6. And when you're talking about trying to move 40, excuse me, 6,400 pounds of vehicle without anybody or anything in it, that's asking a lot of an inline six and it just, it, it, it ends up behaving a little oddly. You end up with kind of a herky-jerky kind of power delivery. It's not smooth like it should be. And when you need to get this thing out of someone's way, it takes time. It also has a lazy transmission, so that doesn't help either. It takes a lot of time to downshift. Uh, it's an eight speed. It's not a bad transmission, but it's lazy. It is not quick. So very heavy vehicle, <clears throat> but also very well appointed. As you can see, when you approach the vehicle, those steps come down. And the puddle lights come on. This is all standard equipment. Lots of adjustments to these seats. They are heated and cooled. These also have massage function. And the one thing that's really cool about the massage function is it also works on the bottom cushion, which I have not experienced before, even in the high-end German cars, they don't do that. So I thought that was a pretty cool feature. And I'll start it up here as you start it. You've got nice big screens. And ambient lighting. Uh, it's blue, if you can see that. It's a little bit hard to see because it's not very dark out. Uh, Macintosh audio system. Has a panoramic roof that is closed right now, but that screen obviously opens. Seven passenger, although you can opt for an eight passenger if you want does have a screen back here also for control just for HVAC controls and heat and plenty of plugs for your phone or iPad the same thing in the very rear you've got plugs for charging a phone or an iPad you've got cup holders and vents and then of course you can move those seats forward from back here also even with that third seat up. So that's where the L is really nice because it gives you that extra space you don't get in a Grand Wagoneer that is not an L. Now, as far as the competition goes, this is up against the Lincoln. It's up against the Cadillac if you wanna put it up against that or at the very least, a Chevy Suburban. There's my fuel mileage for the last 100 miles. And I've been driving it gingerly, okay? If you hammer this thing, 
the mileage is atrocious. But again, very large vehicle, very heavy. Lots of different ways you can configure that dash. So, excuse my chicken scratch, but just to show you quickly, in a base model Wagoneer, which is this one, you're coming in at 97,640. Base model, Navigator, in the same size, I had to go to Reserve L to get the same size. It is slightly more, it's 100,690, okay? Uh, that has less horsepower, it's a 3.5 twin turbo V6, and that has 440 horsepower, okay? But still good, just not quite as much as this. And then when you go to the Suburban, substantially less. This is for a Premier, 81.685 for a base model. And that's with the 5.3. Uh, excuse me, that's the 6.2 in the Premier. So that's 420 horsepower. Uh, GMC Yukon XL AT4, similar vehicle, 83,560 is the base for that. Um, but obviously very similar to the Suburban Premier. And then the Cadillac Escalade ESV, which is the longer version, that has the 6.2 also, same engine, 89,890, okay? And so that is about $8,000 cheaper than a base Grand Wagoneer. And that is a very established luxury brand. Um, and the new Escalades are quite nice. Now, if you load them up, then you're looking at for the Yukon, 103,940 for the Ultimate, Denali Ultimate. For the Reserve L Lincoln Navigator, 107,750. For the Suburban High Country, you're at 92,915. And the Escalade ESV Premium Luxury Platinum, don't, don't ask me why they need so many names for that damn thing, 119,315, okay? But that is loaded to the gills. And for the Grand Wagoneer L, this, uh, for a Series 3 Obsidian, you're at 123,850. So even more than a completely loaded Escalade ESV. There's where I have an issue. That's a, the, all of those other vehicles are very established luxury makes and have great equipment, really, really nice vehicles. And this thing is even more expensive and this is their first try at it. So I think this is where Jeep is gonna have some trouble and they're gonna have to incentivize the heck out of these to get them to roll, especially when they're loaded. Uh, and that's already evident because Jeep's already complaining that they're having trouble selling these. Uh, Stellantis is making them take a few for each dealership. They don't have a choice. They have to take them. And you're going to see incentives on these because at that price point, people are going to shop. You know, when you're spending $100,000 on a vehicle, you don't do that on a whim. You shop around. So, and you, you can't even make the argument, oh, well, those people are rich and they'll just write a check and it's no big deal to them. Let me tell you something, the more wealthy a person is, the more they shop around, the tighter they are with a buck. That's part of the reason they are wealthy. So Jeep definitely has its competition. And uh, if you have any comments or questions, I'd love to hear from you. Um, if you wanna argue about this is their first foray into luxury vehicles, bring it on. Um, I know a lot about all of these vehicles and I'm pretty confident in saying that this is their first try at it and it's not a bad one i just think the price is a little high and uh, it's got some great competition so thanks for watching and let me know if you have comments